will drop this next one in because Chris actually has been able to cover this for us currently. And this is um, a uh, bodacious and burly workstation, a Dell Precision workstation, Precision 7865, 7865 workstation review, cool, quiet, 64 core powerhouse. That's what we called it. Um, and it's a fairly subdued black box there right over chris's left shoulder yeah left shoulder hey, yeah. see how i did that that's yeah, pretty sorry, good translation it's a bit dark right now but <laughs> and uh 64 cores 128 threads up to 4.5 gigahertz 64 gigs of ddr4 3200 megahertz memory and rtx a thousand a six thousand uh ampere quadro yes. for all intents and purposes uh pro viz card two terabyte nvme storage i mean Holy mackerel. Oh, in RAID 0, mind you. Um, wow. Yeah. Wired so for thing, sound, right? <clears throat> it, it's built for speed, that's for sure. Um, so uh, very impressive workstation. Um, so I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the Threadripper Pros were initially a Lenovo exclusive for a period of time. Very short period of time. Yeah. Um, so they've since opened up to other manufacturers, um, so of course the Dell precision system here, um, it's very well put together when you're working inside of it, it feels like a server because it's using very similar components and very similar tooling for how it's constructed. Um, even to the side latch, let me just jump down. Sorry for the, uh, you know, racing down the page here, but even the latch here is the same as you'll find on the top of a server to break into the chassis. Um, and you can get a rack mount for it, which was so well hidden. I didn't initially realize it was there until um, I was corrected after the fact and said, actually, there is a way to put a, a, a rack on there. And it's very cool how they integrated it with the top of the chassis um, can be detached. You do need a screwdriver for that. It's not completely toolless, but you can install a rack in there and get it out of the way if you so prefer. But this system is so quiet under load and under operation that it's not a workstation that you need to get out of the way and put in another room. Um, if I can jump over to the, the thermal testing and, and acoustic testing, um, under a worst case scenario where we fire up Furmark and Prime 95 running the small FFTs at the same time, um, literally maxing out GPU, CPU usage, like no real world workload would. 42, 45 dB at Quiet. A, a foot, maybe two feet away, um, which is not any volume level that I'm going to complain about, especially after working with the servers behind me in the room that I really, <laughs> sh I really should have measured those, but they were probably pushing 80 dB. Um, you know, and it's just about server grade silicon and it has a gpu in there that the servers didn't so really really nice um i do see james's comment going right on us on rocket skates uh <laughs> raid zero yes so they did they did outfit this with raid zero um which amounted to really really fast uh um storage speeds uh so i'll pull up uh, the Addo disk benchmark here, and you can see it tipping read speeds in excess of 11 gigabytes per second. And that's PCIe 4. Gen so, 4, yeah. Um, you know, when you get the next generation of Threadripper Pro or with these Intel chips we were just discussing that you can have PCIe 5 on there and you RAID 0 those or maybe multiple together, you can get some probably truly insane speeds um but you know yes there's some concern with uh data integrity with raid zero because if one drive fails the whole array fails but you know if you're dealing with mission critical data you're running backups regardless so if you can get the performance why not <clears throat> if you want to be more conservative and run raid one or raid five or raid 10 go for it you can configure it that way as well yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, we should point out um, the processor here, um, as you, you pointed out, um, PCI Express Gen 4 support on the board. This is not Zen 4. This is Zen 3. Right. Uh, Threadripper Pro 5995WX is the processor on board there, 64 core, 128 threads, 
clocks up to four and a half gigahertz. I mean, look at the Cinebench run. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the Cinebench, unfortunately, we don't have the Zen 2, the the 3000 series um, chip on here. I do have a benchmark here in a minute. But uh, the 5965, was that a 32 core, Marco? I should have uh, that before I brought this up. 65 is, I believe. The 65 is a 24 core. 24 core. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, with this many threads in many workflows, you're not going to get perfect scaling, especially because you will have a fall off in clock rates typically and stuff. But still, I would say that's pretty impressive. Um, you know, right. can I, I, verify can, can I just... 24 cores. Yeah, let me just, I just want to actually wanted to add something on to what, what Chris was talking about before. Steve uh, put in this comment and said, you know, OEM system under 45 is impressive. You know, Chris is the higher decibel reading was using the ultra performance profile. If you use the with system the power virus and yeah, with the power virus, if you use the system with its optimized uh, performance profile, it was 35 dB. It was way quieter. Um, yeah, so, with a with a more with, typical with a standard, workload, right? With this with a standard workload, correct? But still, like you, you, if for regular workloads, you're not going to hear that system most of the time, right? Mm. Um, yeah. So really, really nice. And the optimized profile with this is very, very well tuned. Um, I ran all the benchmarks with the ultra performance preset because we typically do. Um, but spot checking a few of the results with the optimized profile, it, it was interchangeable between the scores um definitely within margins so you can get all that performance without the noise um in in most cases yeah obviously check your own workloads if you're investing in a fifteen thousand dollar workstation and and tweak it to the way that makes sense for you and your workloads and use case but i think for most people um that <clears throat> optimized prof uh, profile is just just fine um and so here in Pavre, we do get that look at the 64 core prior gen uh, Zen 2 chip. And you can see that there is a nice little improvement, 64 core to 64 core here, gen over gen. And yeah. I would hope to see the same kind of improvement as we get to a Zen 4 uh, Threadripper Pro, but that's not here yet. Mm -hmm. um, the you get the, uh, Blender in there, Chris? Sorry. Uh, yes, I do have Blender down here. Um, so, and I was just going to say the crazy thing about this system. So this is the CPU score here. And again, it's Oofa. crushing everything else. Um, this has the RTX A6000 top of the line professional GPU on there. I, I mean, we'll asterisk that and get to it in a moment. Um, and that just falls to the middle of the pack against top end consumer GPU. So the A6000 for those who aren't familiar is basically an RTX 3090 in terms of CUDA core count. Um, but it does have a lower TGP target about two thirds. I think it's 300 watts versus 450 um, and lower uh, clock speeds as a result. It does have double the memory capacity though, 48 gigabytes of VRAM versus 24 gigabytes. So the performance here is perfectly in line with our expectations. But my takeaway from this is I really want to see the new Ada Lovelace uh, RTX 6000 professional GPU, which I think is, <clears throat> I, I'd have to go double check, but I think it's either the equivalent of the 4090 or even slightly higher, maybe 4090 Ti theoretical type specs, um, which should bring even more performance improvement. Um, it's crazy to me that an A6000 is holding this machine back um, but that just shows you how powerful that Threadripper Pro is. Well, and and how powerful GPUs have gotten this this generation. I mean, the leap yeah. is significant. Um, and oh, go ahead. sorry, no, I was no, gonna say go there's an it. interesting data point if you scroll to the Black Magic numbers too. Yes. Um, yeah. So that that's an interesting. Why don't you talk talk to that one because that's something yeah. that people are gonna be like, what? So so Black Magic <laughs> Raw. 8k image decode um so this is you're getting your 8k video footage and you're decoding it from blackmagic raw into an intermediate format for editing in uh probably davinci resolve since that's blackmagic software um so um in the typical 12 to 1 compression ratio the the more compressed uh format that most editors right now are probably working with if they're working at this scale at all um just because the memory demands are so high, 
that's the blue bars and it follow, <clears throat> follows in line with GPU power expectations. So again, just behind the 3090 Ti here. But when you go to just the three to one compression, so it's not as computationally impressive, uh, uh, intensive, but it's much more memory intensive. You see the results shoot way up for this precision system. And we, we expect that that's a combination of a couple of things. A is the 48 gigabyte frame buffer that the GPU has. Um, so it can just keep all that in video memory. But even to get the data there, the eight channel memory in the workstation system that the Threadripper Pro allows um, also just allows that data to flow. So you're, you're mm. uh, you know, in this case, you can see all Oof. these other GPUs are pretty flat lined, which yep. is indicative of a different kind of bottleneck, which we assume to be memory bandwidth in a typical two channel system. And by opening that up, like this is this, this sells the system for video effects editors and stuff like that. Like that's just an incredible result. Yeah. Yeah. Over two X. Nice. So, you know, I, I think it's funny. We've gotten some comments on this, like, Oh, my laptop can get 64 gigs of Ram and stuff, but like getting the nuance of what makes a workstation, a workstation and why yeah. it's $15,000. I mean, again, that price to like, it's in fluctuation because many of the companies buying these systems are going to be bulk buying. They're going to get discounted rates. It's still going to be a lot of money, but they're, they're probably not paying the full 15,000. That's just a list price. If you go on the site and buy it. Um, yeah. But that's the, like, you're making money with the system and you've, you've got someone who's probably being paid six figures to operate it and, and do the powerful work they're doing, you know, at the end of the day, 15,000 or whatever you configure it to for your needs is a rounding error in your budget. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> you know, you know, and if you factor the components, right, the, the mm -hmm. 59, the 5995 WX is 6,700 bucks mm -hmm. and yeah. the a 6,000 is 3,700 bucks. So yeah, you're yeah. at 11, 11 grand just for the CPU and plus GPU. eight so channels of like, memory. Right. Yeah. So it's not like Dell's doing something crazy asking 15, you know, right. you know over 15 K for this. And, and out of curiosity, I went to Lenovo site, their P620 workstation. I kitted out the same configuration and it was basically the same price. I went to Puget systems. Theirs was like 17,000. Um, workstations do not come cheap as I put right at the top of the article in the bullet points, like that, if that's the nature of the beast. <laughs> indeed I, I need uh, but one. if you need the beast <laughs> yeah exactly if you need the beast it can come in handy it's like it's like uh, my dad used to say when, when i when i'd see him you know buying some you know i don't know multi-thousand dollar you know saw or something he's a big trades guy you know a contractor developer um he'd say hey you need the good tools you you, you want the good tools you don't want the the, right. the cheap tools getting in the way <laughs> this is not a luxury it's an investment it's an investment. Yeah, exactly. So good stuff. Good stuff there, Chris. The uh, Dell Precision 7865 workstation, uh, cool and quiet, 64 core beast. Well done. Yeah. Tim, you pay for performance, but you're more paying for the reliability. It's the ISV certifications for the software, the yeah. ECC memory, like the, the resiliency of the system as well. Um, if it was just about performance and benchmark numbers, yeah, go get a gaming system for most use cases. But if you depend on your system, if you're if you're building that multi-million dollar bridge, as I say in the conclusion, you need it to work and work accurately more than you need it to work fast. Yeah, that's an interesting point. I know we're, we're running out of time. We got to be quick. But, you know, I was just thinking about this. If you were to buy the parts, right, you're going to probably spend about the same because the motherboard is another G. You know, it's another I don't know what six, eight hundred bucks for RAM, the OS license, the storage the PSU, mm -hmm. the case, right? But you're not going to get the ISV certifications, right? right. So for a, effectively no markup, you get a pro workstation with a warranty and the ISV certifications. That's And the vendor support just, that comes with it. Exactly, right? So like there's there's very little premium in the rig, even though it's extremely expensive. It's just, it's wild to think about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's funny how it, it adds up like that. And I think there's probably a fair demographic out there of workstation professionals that settle for consumer class hardware and you know probably occasionally pay for it but they're you know 
smaller companies that don't have the budgets or whatever and so they get by but yeah when 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 it's mission critical when you're you know working for a serious you know i don't know production studio or something like that or design studio you don't mess around you go with the good stuff the a6000 in here is a really sharp looking card and i like pretty uh, it's pretty uh it's, nondescript i will say that it's so <laughs> i don't know i like it i like the industrial you like look. and the yeah. the edge up here has these little gold ripples i oh, just think it looks nice, nice. i'm, I'm yes, a sucker sweet. for the minimalism aesthetic yes yeah it's got a little extension bracket on the back almost like it's dare i say support. compact yeah well, wow. i'm gonna piss some people off and say it's very radeon seven like <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. Uh, I'm Vega, a squirrel cage Radeon fan. 7. Yeah, Radeon Seven had three fans, but yeah, the, it's very Vega like. Yeah, I don't funny. dislike it. If it's yeah, not, it's would, not loud. Clearly, I mean, even with that squirrel cage fan, it's not loud, right? So, I mean, obviously, at 42 dB under heavy load, it's not making yeah. a racket. And that's and that is, you know, again on the cooling side, what surprised me in how well it ended up performing because the CPU uses a a passive tower cooler um let's see i've got a shot of it here that you can kind of see this is more to show the the eight channels of memory but you know there's no fans on this the fan is part of the baffling that goes over and there's just a 60 millimeter fan here and you know if you see one of those in a server you expect it to be very very loud screaming Um, yeah (laughs) and it's not and it's evidently effective so kudos to Dell for figuring that out and making it work. Yeah, it's a different ball of wax for sure. Good stuff, Chris. Thank you very much.